Pop quiz, Hot Shots. When did Touch ID first debut in an iPhone? You have three seconds to respond. Too late! It was 2013 with the iPhone 5S. Pop quiz! When did the Mac first get Touch ID? You have three seconds. No, you don't. It's already too late. 2016 was the first time we saw Touch ID on a MacBook Pro. Eventually found its way onto the MacBook Air in 2018, but there were only three years between the debut of Touch ID on an iPhone and then seeing it launch on a Mac. Why then did Face ID launch in 2017 with the iPhone 10, but it's still even in 2022, five years later, has not found its way onto any Mac of any kind. The Notch has made its way onto a MacBook Pro, but not Face ID. In today's video, we're diving into exactly why and what Apple's explanations are, and if there's any hope for the superior biometric finding its way onto the Mac platform. Let's begin. So, in an interview when people were asking about Face ID coming to the MacBook Pro last year, Apple executives claimed that it was more convenient to have Touch ID. It wasn't a lack of trying or a lack of hardware to put Face ID on a Mac. It was simply that Touch ID was the superior biometric for Mac because you had to already put your fingers and hands close to the keyboard itself in order to start using the device. And if your hands are going to be down there, might as well just have a fingerprint reader. But I personally believe this is a cop-out answer because on the iPad Pro, Apple obviously had no interest in bringing Touch ID to the Magic Keyboard case. They were perfectly fine with the concept of you opening up a device with a keyboard and a trackpad and the Face ID sensors looking at you and unlocking. Maybe that allows them to keep the price of the Magic Keyboard case lower, but I don't think they care much about affordability with those keyboard cases in the first place. And I think the main reason they weren't able to put it on the next generation MacBook Pros was because the display lids themselves are just fundamentally too thin to adopt these true depth camera systems that Apple is able to stuff in iPhones and iPads, which have much, much thicker backs behind those camera sensors. So essentially, there's not really hardware that exists that would allow you to put Face ID in a current generation MacBook of any kind. Hopefully that technology can be miniaturized over time, but at least with laptops, Apple is basically saying Touch ID is the way to go. But I think that hardware limitation doesn't quite apply with the iMac line, which is why I was kind of surprised that the 24-inch iMac did not get Face ID, considering it's a $1,500 $100 product and we've seen Apple sell Face ID equipped iPhones for $499 with the iPhone 11 and iPad Pros have had Face ID that they sell for $800, sometimes less if you go certified refurbished. So I don't think it's the sensors themselves that are too expensive. And of course the 24 inch iMac has 11 millimeters of thickness. So trying to embed Face ID in there should be a piece of cake. You should have room to spare if you can fit Face ID into a 5.9 millimeter iPad Pro. This is an even bigger machine and you don't even have a battery life to worry about. I also could think of all of the great use cases, right, of like Mac OS supporting different profiles. Imagine if it was the family Mac and when you sat down, it just did a face ID scan and it knew exactly who you were and it knew which profile to open up. You wouldn't even have to take that active step of reaching your finger out and placing it on the touch ID sensor. You could just slap the space bar or hit the mouse or hit the trackpad and it boots up and it unlocks really quickly. But I think the main reason Apple may have been against even adding face ID to the iMac where there's not many hardware limitations is because of features aside from just unlocking the device because face ID of course the reason I'm a big fan of it is it's used for other things aside from just unlocking I personally find face ID far more useful when you're unlocking banking apps or accessing iCloud keychain passwords because I don't have to remember to rest a specific finger on a specific part of the device I just tap the app or I just tap the password and face ID is already looking at me because I'm looking at the device and it allows me to get through that security without having to think about entering a password or without even having to think of resting my finger a certain way. The difference with an iMac, especially with features like Apple Pay, is that it's going to require you to actively take an extra step to confirm that the purchase goes through itself. We already kind of have this with iOS, but we have a side button resting there. So if we want to buy something, it has you double tap the side button to confirm and then the purchase goes through. Whereas if we had Face ID on a Mac, they would actually require you to double tap some kind of button and it probably shouldn't be the space bar in case you're, you know, like typing in the middle of something and then an Apple Pay window pops up. You don't want to go through accidentally purchasing something and having to cancel it. So given that the Mac is always going to be looking at you and always going to be ready to scan your face, if an Apple Pay prompt comes up, there better be a button you can reach out and press. Maybe it's the power button on the back of the iMac. Maybe it's a key on the keyboard itself that's not something you would be pressing ordinarily if you were just in the middle of texting or typing. So might as well turn it into where that old eject key used to be, but if you're gonna have to press that key anyway to go through the transaction, why not just put 
touch ID there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think there's more use cases on the iPhone of biometrically locking apps and accessing iCloud keychain passwords without you having to take additional extra steps to unlock a particular app or access certain passwords. Whereas with the Mac, maybe those situations would arise, but I definitely think they wouldn't be as common, especially because on the Mac, a lot more of our banking apps and security are done through websites, not necessarily applications. And because it's going to be more common that you have to interact with the keyboard or the mouse, because currently all iMacs don't have touchscreens, Apple's logic of, well, the Touch ID sensor is already there on the keyboard, so why do we need to provide an additional biometric if you're going to be resting your fingers there anyway? I somewhat get the argument, although at the end of the day, there's still enough times where I'm installing certain software or when I'm accessing certain passwords that I would like the device to just be able to look at me and I don't have to reach out my hand. I know it's a small difference. I know it probably takes an insignificant amount of time, but it is certainly a feature I would appreciate if they could figure it out in the future. But the other part of the problem as to why Face ID probably hasn't found its way onto a Mac yet is just that with an iPhone and with an iPad, getting rid of the Touch ID home button, there was kind of a direct and obvious answer that allowed for more screen real estate. There was going to be a front-facing camera on all iPhones and iPads regardless because we use them for selfies and FaceTime, so might as well beef up that camera a little bit and go with face unlock technology. That way you can make better use of screen real estate on the front of the device. Now we can have six inch screens and pretty compact form factors, whereas we're not really trying to get rid of the keyboard on MacBooks. We're not really trying to get rid of the external keyboards that we use with our iMacs and Mac minis. So getting rid of Touch ID kind of frees up a lock button, an eject key, which macOS hasn't really made good use of the eject key in recent history anyway, so there's less of a direct advantage to ditching Touch ID on the Mac, especially if to confirm Apple Pay purchases you're gonna have to reach for a key and press it twice anyway. But then again, this does beg the question, if Apple does want to prioritize screen real estate, and it sounds like, you know, with the iPhone 14, they're trying to actively make the notch and the camera cutout smaller, why not then fall back on Touch ID and just either put it underneath the display or in the side button, that way you can have an more immersive screen on the front. Well, maybe it would just look freaking too much like every other Android on the market and they want to differentiate themselves a little bit. Maybe they like the freedom of you not having to worry about which finger is resting on the side button or where exactly on the display the fingerprint reader is. So the just more passive nature of Face ID is just more Apple-esque because it allows the technology to just blend into the background and you don't even think about it. But after all my years of using both, I can still confidently say I prefer Face ID, but I don't really use Touch ID in my MacBook all that often because it unlocks via my Apple Watch. But on occasion, if I'm installing software on my Mac or something, I will rest my finger on the Touch ID sensor and it is pretty quick and pretty reliable. But I still think it was an interesting discussion to talk about why Touch ID made more sense on the Mac and why Face ID has still not made its way over yet. We might have to wait quite a bit, but I definitely think it would find its way in a Mac sooner if it was an all-in-one desktop rather than trying to cram all of those sensors into the incredibly thin display lids on MacBooks. So if you guys have your own theories on why Apple doesn't want to do it yet or what the pros and cons of having both biometrics on the device would be or which one you think should be the only biometric on the Mac. Feel free to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions down below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you all in the next one.